The following is an excerpt from the Octane Master Course, which is the first fully comprehensive series of video tutorials for Octane Render in Cinema 4D. It's meant for all skill levels and will cover everything you've ever wanted to know about Octane and how it interacts with Cinema 4D. This course will also continue to evolve and update as Octane and Cinema 4D change over the years. If you would like more information on the Octane Master Course and where to buy it, check the link below. Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video we're going to be learning how to properly export out the Z-Depth Pass inside Cinema 4D and Octane Render. Now this video is going to be a quick tip so I'm going to be showing you how to do this process in the fastest way possible and this video is going to be meant for somebody who's not really interested in understanding all the nitty gritties of the process and just simply wants to know how to do, set everything up as quick as possible and just simply make it work. But again, if you are interested in understanding all the details of this process, go ahead and check out the video above this one that is not the quick tip version. But with this out of the way, let's go ahead and begin. To start, I have an Octane Daylight object lighting my scene with just a torpidity of 3 and a sun size of 30. I also have a cloner object that is set up to a grid array and it is cloning these cubes that have been resized and reshaped to this size you can see here. I also have a floor with an octane object tag on it so it'll render and for my material I have myself set up with a random color node plugged into a gradient set to its interpolation of constant which is red, green, and blue that has been thrown onto these cubes and I've also made sure that my cloner is set to render instances so that random color effector can affect these and we have these colors going on here. Next up let's go ahead and talk about how we start rendering the z-depth pass. First thing we need to do is we need to head up to our settings up here, change our renderer from standard to octane render. Next select the octane render tab here go to render passes click enable and then choose your file save location for me i'm just going to use this location here i'm going to call this test one i'm going to press enter to save that next up i'm going to choose my file out put type, I'm just going to do an EXR 16-bit, take the compression set to none, check on save beauty, disable multi-layer files, and check on folders as we should for an EXR file. Next up, it's a very important, I'm going to take my tone map type and change this from linear to tone map. I've done this to keep my um, Z-depth pass from being completely blown out when we render it. You must set your tone map type to tone map or you will not get a proper Z-depth pass. Next up, under info passes down here, I'm going to twirl this open, we have Z-depth. Make sure to check this on. Once you do, we're actually going to get a pass right here that I can select. We have main and we have Z. So now we're actually previewing the Z-depth pass. Notice it's rendering out pure white at the moment. That's because we need to change our Z-depth max. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this around till it kind of looks like I want my scene. There we go. This is about the look I'm kind of going for. Now that we have this set up, we are actually all set and good to go in here. The only thing I will mention is we need to make sure our max sample count is something decently high. Now at 128, it's okay. This renders really quick. For me personally, I like something at about 1,000. So just go ahead and type in 1,000 just so it renders up really nice and clean. I will point out that it does take a little bit extra render time to process these info passes on top of the actual render, but do not be worried about that. It literally takes at most a second or two to process a thousand samples in most scenes. This render is extremely quick, not something to be concerned with. Now that we have all this set up though, we are good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Finally, I'm going to open up my render settings and I am going to enable the alpha channel. Now, this is something of personal preference. You do not have to enable the alpha channel if you don't want to, but I just want to go ahead and set up the worst case scenario. So in my case, I am going to go ahead and set up an alpha channel because that's what most people are going to be exporting. Finally, notice we have an issue. If I select our Z-Depth Pass, notice we have an alpha channel here. Even with alpha channel checked off, we have a black background. This is a problem because the distant object should be white and the close object should be black. And everything in between should be a gray spectrum of that. This is a problem because when we try and layer this in post, we're going to get a fringe because it's not a proper z-depth pass with a pure white background so to fix this all we have to do even with alpha channel on and off on my mind you we still have this issue i'm going to leave alpha checked on so to fix this we need to remove the alpha here and have and have a pure white background how do we do this well i have a nice workaround for that what we're going to do is we're going to create a sphere and we're going to press t and we are going to scale it up now, once we are inside of the sphere, you can see we have a proper Z-depth pass. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale it until it clips so much that I can't see anymore, so it doesn't bother me. And if I go back to main, you'll see that we have a problem where we're actually seeing the sphere. And it's all bugged out and weird, and we're losing our light, and it's just really wonky. So, how do we fix this? Well, we're going to go to materials, 
octane diffuse material, apply this material to that sphere, double click this material, go to common and check on shadow catcher. When I do this, this will stop the sphere from affecting our main scene and will not affect our alpha channel anymore. But lo and behold, it does affect our Z depth and gives us that pure white background and removes that alpha channel and that back black background that we had before. Now that this is solved, we can finally finish up by making sure, this is very important, underneath camera imager we have pre-multiply alpha checked off. It's very important that you have that checked off. Now, again, if you're interested in more of the nitty gritty stuff of this and want to understand why I'm doing this, check out the video above. But again, this is a quick tip. Finally, before we export everything out, we need to change our response. There's a very good reason for this. Notice in our settings up here under render passes, I did set our tone map type to tone mapped. This means we are going to be linearizing our system. The problem is, since we are not linearizing, we've changed our tone map, so we're not linearizing our Z depth. We've left it wide open, though, that we're going to take our tone map system we have here for this sRGB or linear, whatever you happen to be using, and it's going to linearize that on top of that. That is a problem because now we are going to be brightening our image. It's going to be made too bright. It's going to linearize what we already have set here instead of just leaving it as linear. So how do we fix this? We need to counteract the brightness that's caused by that linearization. How do we do this? Select response. Go down here to the very bottom, select linear. Set your gamma to one. When you do that, we will be counterizing, counteracting that by dropping its um, brightness down to counteract the brightness that's gonna be caused when it's linearized. You can check on natural response if you want. It really has no effect in this case. And at this point, we are ready to export. Finally, we can go ahead to our back to our render settings, choose kernels, drop our render some down to like a thousand. It'll just be really quick to render this out. And I'm finally gonna do control shift R or I can just click up here to start the render. I'm gonna start churning this out. Now, again, beware, we are rendering in EXR, so I do not want to stop the render prematurely until it's completely finished or the EXR will not be saved. So it's very important that I let this render completely finish. Now that it has, we can go ahead and check out that final render we have there. Here you can see, here is my main file and here is my Z file. So I have my main and my Z, so I'm going to go ahead and import both of them into After Effects. So let's go ahead and open up After Effects. Lo and behold, here it is. Let's go ahead and drag both of them in. So I'm going to open this up, drag in the EXR. Let's go ahead and check this one out. It has loaded in. Excellent. Next up, we're going to go back. We're going to go grab our Z depth and we're going to go ahead and drag him in as well. So now we have both of them in there. Let's go ahead and take our color, drop this down here, make a new composition and pull in our Z depth as well. And now you may notice that we actually do have an alpha channel being rendered with our Z depth pass. Why is this? You might be wondering what the heck is going on. This can be solved quite easily and explained if we hop back into Cinema 4D. What happened was, is I had my live viewer rendering. It was actually going, it was rendering through, it was doing all that stuff that it was doing live when I created this sphere. So it was kind of like quickly dumped into the VRAM of the system. This simply bugged out because when I just drug that in like that, it never fully got loaded into the system. A great way to fix it is to simply click resend a scene. And if we have our sphere set up with the shadow catcher material on it, we just reload our scene. You can do it one or two times. Depends how I'm paranoid you are about it. It will fix it. Now, the good news is, is this will only happen, uh, one time on one frame. It shouldn't continuously happen on multiple frames. So even though it happened on that one frame, as long as I refresh this, resend it, and then re-render the frame, the next frame would have picked it up and pulled it in. So this is just a quick fix. Make sure that when you drag that sphere in before you do the final render, you just kind of resend your live render one more time, just kind of re-grab and pull everything in your scene. That's typically a good thing to do before you start a big long render anyway, just to make sure everything looks good and resend it and check that out. Make sure the colors are all loading in correctly, et cetera, et cetera. Just want to make sure you're aware of that potential issue that can arise and how to solve it. So again, once this renders out again properly, it's going to rewrite those files that we've already saved. So we can go ahead, hop into After Effects, and we can just go ahead and reload these files. Here it is. Here's our Z depth. Reload footage. Boom. It is fixed. So now we can see that proper Z depth map working. We can see that we lost the alpha channel on the Z depth, but we maintained it on our beauty. Now, as an added bonus, what we can do to kind of help um, add a little bit more um, usability to the Z depth maps. I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys quickly how you can use it. What we can do is we can simply uh, right click, make a new solid. I'm just going to leave this default color I have here, select the solid, go to my effects and presets, and I'm just going to search a gradient. There it is. And we're going to use a gradient wipe effect. And we're just going to go ahead and drag and drop this on here in the gradient wipe effect. Um, change your gradient layer to the test Z. So whatever your Z depth pass is, select that one. And then you can just start literally pulling this value to start pulling and adjusting 
increasing your depth on that. And I'm just going to go ahead and change my transition softness to max. And lo and behold, we have post effect fog that works friggin awesome. Now there's a little extra little tidbit I want to go ahead and show you guys if we turn off this um, gradient here at the moment and we get rid of our Z depth, I want to point out we are getting a really um, kind of white fringy effect happening on the edges of our object. Why is this? This is because we need to make sure that if we go to our project, we select our main guy with this and we right click and we go to interpret footage main on our main pro post effect there, we have pre multiplied with Mac color. Now this can be fixed because we want to make sure it's rendered straight. So we're just going to go ahead and select straight and we're good to go. This in most cases will be all you need to do. It kind of makes sense. We rendered out a straight alpha, so we want to make sure it's interpreted as a straight alpha. Now, interestingly enough though, if we want to go ahead and color correct this, there's a problem that can arise. If I go ahead and color correct this, which the best way I recommend color correcting in After Effects is right clicking, doing new um, adjustment layer. And then in this adjustment layer, we go to effects and we're going to do color correction. And then we're going to select Lumetri color. Now I do want to po uh, point out, you do not have to apply a Lumetri color to adjustment layer. You could put it on each layer individually. I'm just being lazy, but I do recommend highly using Lumetri color for your color correction because it's just so dang easy, similar to that of Lightroom and Photoshop. So if we go ahead and take our black values and we pull this down though, notice we are clipping horribly, horribly bad in our shadows. This is because if we go back to our project settings, we open up this little 16 bit tab here, we are using linearized working space. We do not want this. Uncheck it, press OK, and that will fix the issue. Notice though, we now get black fringing though on the edges of our scene here. This is frustrating. How do we remove this? Well, this is actually can easily be removed. I'm going to go ahead and just disable the Lumetri color effect just to show you guys that that has nothing to do with this. So I'm going to disable the entire adjustment layer entirely, still getting that black fringing. How do we remove it? Oddly enough, all we have to do is right click, interpret our footage, interpret footage main for our beauty. And we actually want to pre multiply that footage. So, yes, and we're going to press OK. So, yes, even though in Cinema 4D we specifically made sure that we exported out without pre multiply alpha, we want to pre multiply that alpha in After Effects. That's a strange workaround that is the only way that you can have no fringing with linear working space checked off so you can properly use Lumetri Color. I know this is a bit of a long workaround, but trust me, it is worth it. This gives you the most flexibility in post, and you can use so many Z-Depth passes to do so many cool tricks and effects. Also, make sure you leave Blend Colors using 1.0 Gamma checked on so you can properly multi-pass things such as um, your post effects and stuff to be an add multiply on top of that. So if you're rendering out a post effect um, such as that little glary effects and stuff you get in Octane Render, you want to make sure that's checked on. So when you click add to multiply that on top of your beauty, it actually works and renders correctly. At this point, though, this video is done. Thank you so much for watching. I'm not going to do a recap of what we just learned because, again, this is a quick tip. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found it helpful and cannot wait to see you all in the next video.